What makes an underwater film really great? Is it expensive camera gear that was used in the process of creating the underwater images? Or maybe it is a tropical exclusive location where the filming took place. Well, honestly speaking, those two factors will certainly not hurt in the creation of a good looking, engaging underwater film. But if you do have a convincing, good story behind your film, you can definitely work without having expensive camera gear or being in an exclusive location and still end up with a great underwater movie. How this works and how you can use storytelling to make your next underwater film so much better, that's what we're gonna look in today's video. Coming up. Hey and welcome back to the channel guys, it's great to see all you smiling faces again. Today it's storytelling time, so we'll talk about how you can create an engaging story for your next underwater film. But before we get into that, I really want to take the opportunity to thank every one of you who joined me last week for my premiere of my um, award-winning film at the Swiss Underwater Videography Championship, which is called The First Time. We watched it here together last Thursday and I'm thankful for every one of you who tuned in and asked questions about the creation of the film. It was my great pleasure watching it together with you publicly for the very first time and answering your questions there. And and that was also where the idea came up for today's video where I'm going to be talking, as I said, a bit about how to create an engaging story when you don't have expensive underwater camera gear and might not be in the most thrilling location that you can imagine. Now before we get into that, um, I do want to take a moment to thank um, or to give a shout out to Johanny Vaikunen. Johanny is the very first member um, of the channel here. If you guys have missed this, I have introduced um, a channel membership with two different options that you, can, uh, that you can join to support the channel here and support my work that I do here on the channel. But it's not just a support, it is also um, giving you some benefits in return. Now, Yuhani, thank you very much for kicking it off and signing up for the membership there. I really appreciate all your help. And uh, if anyone out there um, wants to join Yuhani as a member of the channel here and wants to give me a little bit of financial support, making me um, able to keep continuing creating all the content that I do here, and as I said, in uh, return, get some really cool benefits at the same time, feel free to click the button down below this video which says become a member. It's gonna take you to a page which will show you the two different member options and it's also gonna tell you what um, benefits you'll get in each of these options. Thank you very much if you decide to become a member. I appreciate every single one of you becoming a member and obviously also your support in keeping this channel running. All right, enough with that. Let's get into the topic of today. First of all, I wanna talk about the equipment that I have used to create this film my first time. The film um, talks about a scuba diver, um, a quite experienced scuba diver who has hundreds and hundreds of dives under his belt in many locations worldwide, but he's never done any diving in our local waters here in Switzerland. So this is a story of this diver going for his very first dive in a Swiss lake and uh, his expectations uh, about the dive and all that sort of stuff. And what he obviously sees throughout the dive and how this dive possibly does or does not change the view um, or how he views the diving in cold water in Swiss water. So the equipment that I've used is uh, actually quite 
basic. Now I said before that I filmed everything that was used in this film on an iPhone 13 Pro and I've used, uh, I filmed it inside or used the iPhone inside uh, my favorite smartphone underwater camera housing which is the C-Touch, the Difog C-Touch 4 Max which is in my opinion the best housing you can get for your smartphone out there on the market right now simply because of its incredible touchscreen capability, making it so easy to work with your smartphone underwater and use the, um, the smartphone's camera app and all that sort of stuff. So it just works like a charm. So obviously I had some uh, help of some accessories making me capable to create and capture the images that I captured. It wasn't just the iPhone inside the, um, the dive fork housing. Let me show you the rig that I've used to film all these sequences in the lake of Neuchatel. Well, this is the rig. So as you can see, it's a little bigger than just the iPhone and the housing. Uh, I've also put a um, handle on it, uh, a tray with a dual grip handle, which makes it really easy to hold on to it and maneuver it through the water. And then obviously I've got some fairly big lights. These ones are the Keldon 8X um, underwater video lights. They are, um, I have to admit, not very cheap. They're fairly expensive lights, but they are my go-to choice when it comes to lighting options for underwater imagery, simply because of their, um, their quality uh, light that comes out of them, their build quality, and also their easy handling. Um, Light is really incredibly important when it comes to filming underwater because it's gonna make a huge difference whether or not your camera is gonna be capable of performing to its possibilities. Now an iPhone doesn't really work very well if it's too dark, so plenty of light was what was the key factor for me in creating all those images that I was able to create in that film. Simply because it was giving me, uh, or it was, enabling the camera to uh, focus properly, track the object properly, get nice vivid colors, get good contrast, good saturation. That's all thanks to um, the lights that I brought with me underwater. So closing this off as a little side note, if you really want to get good results with whatever camera you're using underwater, make sure you have a uh, high quality underwater video lights with you, that's gonna make your job as an underwater videographer so much easier. Now, obviously you don't need to spend so much money to get lights like the Keldon lights. You can also work with smaller lights and a very good budget option I find is this one here. This is the Backscatter Macro White 4300 underwater video light, which is very compact, very lightweight, great for traveling, but yet very powerful and plenty uh, to work with an iPhone and give you plenty of light. And you don't even need two. Obviously, it's preferred if you have two, but if the budget doesn't allow, you can also work with one of these lights and you'll get much, much better results than just working with the iPhone without any artificial lights down there. So enough with the equipment. Let's concentrate on the story part. Now, here's a couple of important things that you should remember. Every story has three parts to it. No matter how short or long the story is, there's always going to be a beginning, there's always going to be a main part, a middle part, and an ending. Um, in my example of the uh, film My First Time, uh, the beginning is where you can see the diver sitting on the rocks, looking out onto the lake, and kind of imagining what the first dive is going to be like that is just about to do. So this is kind of setting the scene, is uh, showing us the surroundings, where we are, and kind of tells the audience what to expect, what is going to happen next. The main part then is the part of being underwater, going down, descending, um, starting the dive, seeing the first things underwater, um, and then basically everything that comes along underwater as well. The last part, the ending, this is basically the last clip where you see the diver's fin or the diver from the back 
as he thinks a way out of the shot and the narrator says about how much he enjoyed this dive and that he's uh, that he can't wait for the next opportunity to go for another dive in a Swiss lake and see what is going to be waiting for him there. So by just remembering this and trying to create a beginning, a middle part and an ending to your film, it's going to make this whole film, this whole clip a lot more complete and it's going to make a lot more sense to your audience in most cases as well. Obviously this means that you cannot just jump in somewhere and just take your camera and start filming whatever you see and then think about how you're gonna put that stuff together once you get back out of the wood. That's normally not how it works. Um, if you wanna tell a story, you normally think about what you wanna say and or what you wanna, um, what the message should be within your film before you get in the water. Now, just to give you a bit of an example, for this film here, um, I went twice to the location um, where the competition was taking place and I did, uh, I think, three or four dives at that location, at that specific dive site to get an idea for what the dive site looks like, um, what is, um, what can I expect to find there in terms of wildlife, in terms of uh, topography, um, all that sort of stuff. So I took the time and the preparation to um, just to get myself acclimatized with the surroundings, with the dive site, with the conditions and all that sort of stuff so that I can come up with an idea on what I want to say um, and what story I want to tell um, for that film. And there's no, not really a shortcut um, around here or through here. You really need to make that effort to think about what story you want to tell before you get in the water, before you start capturing your clips so that you can end up with the clips that you really need. If you don't do that, chances are that you're gonna, in the edit, you're gonna realize that you're missing the wide angle establishing shot that would set the scene for the entire film. So you're missing kind of your, your beginning or you might be missing some close up shots of some of the animals that are down there that will just make nice filling shots in between your story. Just making sure that you think about all that and remember to take the shots that you thought of beforehand, before you went into the water, this is already like making such a big difference it's gonna make your life in the editing process so much easier, putting these pieces together and telling the story that you wanted to tell in the first place. If you wanna take this even a step further, think about introducing a little twist into your story. That's what's gonna happen sort of in the middle of your main part of the main section of your story. What you want to try to do is to make your story not too obvious, introduce a, a surprise in your story that is going to keep your viewers sort of on the edge and interested and keep watching your film. So in my case, it was that at the beginning as they were going down for their dive, there was quite a bit of disappointment in that diver because there was not much to see other than the sea plants or the, the sea grass and they were just swimming around, they didn't really see much. Um, and uh, at one point he was already like, well, this is about it, like it's, it's okay for me, let's go up, I've seen it. And this is where the twist happens. This is where I introduce the, um, the crayfish or the freshwater lobster um, into the story and suddenly there's these uh, crayfish, these uh, freshwater lobsters everywhere and we get to, uh, to, you know, observe them and see them in great detail and, uh, and get a bit of background information about these um, animals at the same time. But it's really that that in the first part of the middle part, it's like that kind of boring even section where he doesn't really see much and it's, it's fairly murky and not really what he was expecting. And then suddenly the crayfish turn up and it turns into a completely different dive. At the end of the dive, we see um, the perch, the school of perch, um, and, and it turns into a completely different way. So I agree with you that this is not the most uh, intricate uh, twist that you can think of. Um, but honestly speaking, it was all I was able to come up with in the short period of time that we had to capture all these images and to create the edit um, of, uh, of the final film. 
Um, and it seemed to still have worked since uh, the judges were quite happy with the story and were giving it, as we know, the first place. So summing it up, story really is king and it does make absolute sense to take and invest some time into building up your story. You can also, if you want, write down a storyboard, make some drawings if that helps you. I normally don't do this, it doesn't really help me in the creation process that I go through. I normally just kind of envision what the story is going to be and what images I want to show and this is how I kind of um, kind of get to the ideas that I want to make into into a film and a story and then sometimes I do write down the specific imagery that I need like a wide angle establishing shot of this and and a close-up shot of that and uh, like a moving shot a padding shot of this so that then I can I can write them down on a slate I do that sometimes uh, I take it with me underwater and while I'm down there filming I can pull out the slate and just tick off um, all the scenes that I've already recorded making sure that I'm not missing out on any of the key scenes that I really need to have in uh, order to tell my story. So I hope that this was beneficial and useful to you and you got some information out of this, uh, of this video here and uh, that you're gonna be uh, trying to invest some more time and energy into the story creation of your next underwater film. And don't be fooled, it's not something that happens overnight. It really does take time and uh, you just need to keep practicing telling these stories and you'll see that you'll get better with time. It's just a natural process of progressing and uh, just getting more used to telling stories and creating ideas that will work with the footage that you, that you can capture and create. Having said this, I wanna bring today's video to an end, but not before I mention two more important things. The first one is, underwater videography workshops. We have four underwater videography workshops that will run this year and uh, it'd be my great pleasure to welcome you on one of these underwater videography workshops. They're live on location workshops and in my opinion the best way to learn about underwater videography and uh, just increase your skill level in a very short amount of time. I'll put a link down to my website where you can find all the listings to the um, current or the upcoming underwater videography workshops. Have a look through them if that interests you. There is also a little form right at the top of that website where you can just leave your email address and name so that you get into my newsletter and you'll be informed about upcoming releases of underwater videography workshops. We've got two really cool ones coming out in the next couple of weeks. If you don't wanna miss out on them put your email address down there and I'll make sure to let you know as soon as we release these new um, workshops and last but not least what I also want to share with you before we really get to an end with today's video is that in next Tuesday's video we'll be taking this video here to the next step we're not going to be talking about storytelling as much anymore but I'm going to show you the entire editing process um, that it took me to create this video so we'll go through all the editing steps that I've taken to create this video I'll show you exactly what I did and I'll explain you why I did this so that you can understand how um, after coming up with the idea, capturing the shots, um, how I then put all these shots together in the sequence that I ended up in uh, eventually and uh, uh, we're creating the film as it stands right now. So if you don't want to miss out on that, well, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet uh, and uh, hit the little notification bell so you do get notified as soon as this video drops. Also, if you enjoyed today's video, please let me know by hitting that thumbs up and uh, also share it with your friends uh, and, uh, and diving family so that they can benefit from the knowledge that I'm sharing here in these videos as well. As always, a great pleasure talking to you guys and sharing my knowledge here with you. Thank you so much for joining me and sticking with me all the way through to the end. And now I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna wish you a fantastic day. Keep capturing your underwater adventures and I will see you next week.